Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, Fractal Bitcoin. Welcome to today's Bitcoin news video. It's Monday, May 13th. Let's get right to the chart. This is the Bitcoin chart on the daily candles. And you can see today we've uh, jumped up about $2,500. So a little green candle here. The weekend, these two green candles on the weekend were very, very small. There were like almost nothing happened over this weekend. But look, we're still in the same elongated bull flag and we're going to at some point turn up, but it could take two, three, four months. We could go down to 52 K over time and then come back up. We don't know, but over the next 18 months is the bull run. We're going to, we're going to go really high. So, all right. Now this is a video. Yeah. Do not sell your Bitcoin. That's uh we should all get that tattooed. Well, here's Michael Saylor. Uh, there's a little video I want to play you. Check this out. Got to just look at the total world wealth. And if the total world's wealth is 900 trillion, a thousand trillion dollars, then there's just no reason why Bitcoin should become 10 to 20 percent of that. And that gets you to a number 10 million dollars of Bitcoin when we're 20 percent of the world's wealth in today's dollar. Got to just look at. Yeah. So if we get to 20 percent of the world's wealth goes into Bitcoin then Bitcoin will be worth $10 million per Bitcoin. So a little math for you on a Monday. <laughs> it's a little bit of history here. Hal Finney writing about why society needs Bitcoin for Extra B Magazine released on this day in 1993. Yeah, so he clearly wasn't writing about Bitcoin per se, but uh, there, there was a, you know, a lot of people working on this working on public and private keys and blockchains for many years before Bitcoin. So I thought this was very interesting. Uh, Hal Finney was uh, very involved from the from the very beginning. He was basically helping Satoshi. So yeah, a little bit of history today. And here, this is this portal thing. I don't know if you've seen this. Yeah, just casually making Bitcoin history on the daily. Yeah, so... Let me, uh, we're going to, we'll, we'll actually watch this because it's only 23 seconds, but yeah, there's this portal. One of them is in, I believe New York and one of them is in Dublin and you can see both sides can see each other here. I'll play this. But anyway, they did a Bitcoin transaction through the portal. <laughs> somebody scan, you know, somebody scanned a, a QR code invoice and, and paid it through the lightning network. Yeah. Let's check it out. I'm Daniel from PubKey Bar in New York City, and what we did here today was make the first Bitcoin payment from New York City to Dublin through the portal. Yay! Go! Oh, yeah. High five. You made Bitcoin history. That's history. More history! Anyway, I thought that was kind of fun. The portal. That, it's kind of an interesting concept, but, you know, okay, let's keep going. Yeah, and here's a great, great quote from Jack Mahler's. There is Bitcoin and there is everything else. Bitcoin gives everyone in the world property rights secured by mathematics. It is the first monetary asset we've been able to engineer with no natural issuer, which means it's just the same for everybody. Nobody can mess with it. This is, this is world changing, like for real. Thank you, Jack Mahler's, for that quote. And here's Jimmy Song. This is a very interesting quote. You know Bitcoin has won when new altcoins don't even have a narrative about Bitcoin, let alone claim superiority. Yeah, because for many years, all these, you know, a new altcoin would come along and they'd say, oh yeah, we're better than Bitcoin because of this, because of that. They'd give all their reasons why they're better than Bitcoin, right? And yeah, it's funny. Not not a lot of them are saying things like that anymore. You know why? Because it's become common knowledge, pretty much, that Bitcoin is in a class of its own. There's Bitcoin, and then there's all the other crypto. And for any of these other crypto to pretend like they're better than Bitcoin or they're going to surpass Bitcoin at at this point, it, it it's silly, right? So now you don't hear it anymore. Very interesting. Yeah, and here's a, here's a quote from apparently this... Uh, Daniel Batten, he was on the BTC sessions, this is a great quote. Any attack vector on Bitcoin weakens the attacker, not Bitcoin. 
<laughs> Isn't it beautiful? Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It literally weakens the attacker. It does not weaken Bitcoin. I mean, wow. All right. Let's keep going before I start to wax poetic. Um, all right. This is kind of big, not big news, but significant news today because El Salvador now has its own mempool space where anyone can check out their Bitcoin treasury holdings. And so you can go to this uh, URL and you can see exactly what they have. And, you know, I'm not a technical person. I don't, you know, this mempool space just shows a bunch of data, but it's real time data and El Salvador is being transparent. And also with El Salvador, look at this. Look at this, the stupid corporate media. Gangs are gaining ground in Latin America. This is why Iron Fist policies won't beat them back. And of course, they're referring to El Salvador uh, uh, arresting all the criminals and all the gang members. But look, the tweet gets community noted. Oh, really? Really? El Salvador's Iron Fist gang crackdown led to murders dropping by 70% in 2023. So it works. It's working. And guess what? Naib Bukele gives even some more information. There was a 70% drop in 2023. However, since the approval of the exception regime, there has been an 86% drop. And since we entered the government in 2019, the drop has reached 95%. We project a 97% drop for 2024. So look, this is the rest of the world. They're trying to criticize El Salvador. El Salvador is doing something amazing. Not only adopting Bitcoin as a nation, but cleaning up their nation. And, and, the, and the corporate media can't handle it. They have to complain about it and they're wrong and they get community noted. Right on Twitter. Okay, here's Frog Friend. Saying, for those who need a graph or a slap in the face, yeah, this is uh, a screenshot from Fred Krueger. Gold can't compete. It's mathematically going to zero. And here's the, <laughs> here's gold versus Bitcoin. Yeah, gold is in permanent decline versus Bitcoin. It's a power law down to zero. Yeah, it just, now, this is even shocking to me, but it's true. It's happening. This is how revolutionary Bitcoin is. All right, let's talk about some education. This is a video from today, actually, from Bitcoin University, Matthew Cratter. Can Bitcoin be copied? And actually, Michael Saylor retweeted this. So check out this. Oh, the links to everything are below. Uh, literally everything links are below. And here's another one that I've. you can see. I'm 11 minutes into watching it. I have to watch it all again. This is from... Uh, Ray Dalio, Principles for Dealing with the Changing World Order by Ray Dalio. I might have mentioned this at the end of last week, but I still didn't watch it. But uh, again, education. We have to educate ourselves. We have to understand things to have confidence in them. And we so we have to educate ourselves so we understand Bitcoin and the macro environment, monetary environment, and then we can be confident. Because without education, you can't be confident, right? You can be brainwashed, but you can't be confident. And here's a really cool clip from the Tuttle Twins. Um, I think we should play this. Yeah, the simplest explanation of why we need Bitcoin. Yeah, let's play this Tuttle Twins clip. Why don't we? Tuttle Twins are awesome. And let's start it from the beginning. It's only a minute. In ancient times, people used metal coins for money instead of paper. And coins made sense because a coin contained precious metal that people found valuable, like gold or silver. Think of it as a dollar's worth of gold being melted into a dollar coin. Yeah, sounds good to me. What's the problem? The problem is that the Roman government decided to make more coins without actually finding more gold. They were turning the same amount of gold into even more coins. How do you make money out of money? Exactly the right question! We need more coins than we have gold for. Shave off pieces of these coins and melt them down with other metals. But if there's less gold in the coins, won't that make them worth less? We don't pay you to ask questions! This seems like cheating. That's because it is, and governments do it all the time. I understand now. When you cheat to create new money, it makes everyone else's money worth less. Look how much lighter it is. 
Exactly! When the money becomes worth less, you need to use more money to buy the same things. That's called inflation. Boom. There you go. That's called inflation, right? See, sometimes we need to look at a little video that's for kids. It helps us understand even better, right? Uh, okay, here's your reminder to subscribe if you'd like to. And let's get into some fiat government nonsense for context because Bitcoin solves these issues. Yeah, well, first of all, the big news today was well, some of the big news is GameStop. Uh, there was a big scandal years ago where GameStop started going up so much that the, the, the stock market or whoever controls that, they just shut off trading. They stopped trading. And so today... GameStop opened and it was up 120% pretty much immediately on the day. So guess what they did? Yeah, they halted trading. For the fifth time today, the game is rigged. Yeah, it went up so much, they just stopped the trading. Why? Why? Yeah, there's no good answer. They claim they're protecting things, but what's happening is these Wall Street guys are getting wrecked, so they have to stop it. Wait, wait, wait. Stop the game. We're getting wrecked. Stop. Why? Why stop the game? Oh, see, these Wall Street people, they think only they can win. Regular people buying GameStop stock, they don't, they don't let them win. They just turn off trading when they start winning. It's terrible. Yeah. And so shorts have lost almost a billion dollars today. And who knows by now, maybe it's over a billion. But yeah, uh, because GameStop shot up so much. Uh, a bunch of sh a bunch of shorts got liquidated, almost a billion dollars worth. And here's the thing: this is why. This is the reason for all this. GameStop's Roaring Kitty is back on Twitter, causing GME to surge ninety percent overnight. Yeah, GameStop won a battle over hedge funds, but Bitcoin is poised to win the war. And yeah, so literally, this guy came back on Twitter and tweeted, and then GameStop shot up, started liquidating a a billion dollars of shorts and all these, these wall street idiots had to halt the trading. It's a complete scam. It's a complete scam. And, and the whole point is this does not happen with Bitcoin. Bitcoin trades 24 seven every day. It never stops. No one can stop you. No one, we can't stop anybody. It's just open. It's how it should be. That's Bitcoin. That's why Bitcoin's going to win. Yeah. They can't halt Bitcoin and it's going to be marvelous. Yeah. They can't halt Bitcoin. Thank you. And this is about inflation. We just learned a little bit. Yeah, here's your savings and there's inflation. Whatever money you have in the bank, it's being devalued quickly. It's a problem. That's why a lot of people are buying Bitcoin. Some people are buying gold. Okay, whatever. It's the only chance. And here's a great quote from George Orwell. We always have to remember... War against a foreign country only happens when the moneyed classes think they are going to profit from it. We can never forget this. This is the only reason war happens. It's because the moneyed classes, they want to profit. They see a way to profit. It's through war. So they have a war. And guess what? The normal people, we die. People give their lives for this dumb war so these rich people can get richer? It's so stupid. With Bitcoin, this can't happen. Because Bitcoin is finite. They can't just print money and go to war. It's beautiful. And again, a reminder, everything the state says is a lie, and everything it has, it has stolen. Yeah, this is from Nietzsche. Just remember that. You should never take the state seriously. They're a, they're a cartel of criminals stealing from you. That's all they do. That's it. That's it. Yeah, and here, coming, coming to a country near you, right now in Canada, they're increasing capital gains tax to 66%. <laughs> Governments are out of control. See? They're just going to keep raising everything. How long are we going to sit here and take this? Honestly. I mean, thank God for Bitcoin. Can you imagine if Bitcoin didn't exist? We would all be completely effed. Thank God for Bitcoin, right? It's our only hope. Yeah, and here's Carl saying, stacking Bitcoin is seen as risky, but buying cars, phones, and other things that depreciate with certainty over time is considered secure. The lack of risk literacy 
has taken its toll on the majority. Bitcoin is not risky. A 100% fiat allocation is. Yeah, fiat is the risky thing. Not Bitcoin. <laughs> it's backwards. And yeah, just in. Elon Musk likens the Federal Reserve to the bank in Monopoly. Yeah, just facts. Look. Yeah, this is how the Federal Reserve works. This is what Elon tweeted. And it it's like, look. The bank can just print more money. That's what it, this says. I'm not even going to read the whole thing. But this is in the rules of Monopoly. What if the bank runs out of money? Oh, you just make more run, more money. Take slips of paper. Do whatever you have to do. Just make more money. That's literally what the Federal Reserve does. Literally. Thank you, Elon. Yeah, now here's uh, some lightning news. Lightning, the lightning network being the layer two that sits on top of Bitcoin where you can make day-to-day -day transactions for very cheap fees, almost zero fees. But it looks like we're going to see the Lightning Network split between the LNMTN, which is the money transmitter network. Uh, I think he's. I think that's a joke. The wider ClearNet network and the Tor network. Probably going to force nodes to KYC to get access to that sweet, sweet stablecoin routing fees. So yeah, and this is all because Lightning Labs announces stablecoins on the Bitcoin Lightning Network. Okay, this is the kind of the big piece of news here. It happened, I think, on over the weekend or Friday. Yeah, and this is not a good idea. It's and look, let's go to Guy Swan's post about it. As much and Guy Swan says, as much as I think this is a useful development for a lot of people, especially in the developing world, it's also a huge banner for regulators that says, "Check how obviously money transmitting we are." Yeah, if Lightning is left to only Bitcoin, I think it can be more easily argued that it is separate and unique in construction and should also be in the regulatory framework. So anyway, the, look, the waters are going to be muddied as we figure out lightning and, and as we build everything going forward, right? There's always these forks in the road we have to decide. Are we going to go this way? Or are we going to go that way? And so we're going to have to talk it out and, and figure it out. But yeah, here's some news about RoboSats. Uh, it's an app. It's an Android app. And it's a platform where you can uh, exchange Bitcoin for national currencies. I haven't used RoboSats yet. A lot of people use RoboSats because I don't think you have to do KYC to use RoboSats. So now there's a new, there's an update to the Android app uh, and I use Android. So uh, I, I'm, I'm definitely going to try it, RoboSats. And also some Noster news. Oh yeah, Noster. No way. Oh, I hit the wrong one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Noster. Yeah. Zap.store. It's a Noster based permissionless app store. So here we go. Now for the Noster protocol, we're going to now we have a uh, an app store and it's permissionless. Thank you. Which means anybody can put their app on there. Right. As opposed to Apple and Google, who they are gatekeepers for their app stores. They'll only take your app if you if you everything is the way they want it, and you also give them thirty percent of 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 your uh, of your revenue from selling your app. What a ripoff! Anyway, this is Noster. This is permissionless. This is the future right here. And yeah, there's a tiny turtle. Yeah, look at this little guy. Oh yeah, that's just to end up on a little natural note. Yep. So this is our website, fractalbitcoin.com. Click this link on the top here. Join our locals community and join our locals community. It's free. Look at this. I'm posting little videos on the weekends, little updates, little just to say hi. And every Friday, and by the way, last Friday's Bitcoin panel was awesome with Julian Figueroa and AC. But every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, we do the Bitcoin panel live stream. Definitely come and check us check us out and hang out with us and chat in the chat. Say hi. So yeah, that's it for today's Bitcoin news video. I appreciate you watching. Please subscribe to the channel and follow the channel and like the video and all that stuff. It really helps. Uh, I appreciate you. Thanks for all your positive feedback and I will see you for tomorrow's Bitcoin news video. All right.